Alright guys, that old furnace is coming out. She's um 34 years old. It's an old gas 80, 80 plus furnace. I got another one that's going in there. It's uh, 14 inches wide, a little 50,000. Um, this house has air conditioning, but it has um, AC on the second floor and it blows down. So this is strictly heating. Uh, nothing's wrapped on any of these ducts. So if you put AC on this, it would sweat. There's no room for it anyway. Because I got it up off the ground because it does, it could potentially flood down here. So, um, this is, this is all open down here and I'm going to have to do is, uh, I'm going to have to take this wall out here to, to be able to get to the, the electrical and, uh, might be easier. These doors always stay open for makeup here, down in the basement down here, so probably going to have to. It's going to be a tricky one, so let me I'll get some shots as I go. I'm going to have to cut the front of this plenum out with my grinder to get in there and to cut the bolts to slide this thing out. It's going to be a tricky one. Let's see if I get you guys some shots. All right, guys, I had to take this, this 8 inch that goes up to the second floor to feed the second floor. I had to take that out and fold this piece back. I had to get in there and grind all the screws. There was all screws screwed all the way around this thing. So I had to get in there and grind them and then hit it with a hammer and a screwdriver to loosen them up. I got the return. I got the return loose, but she's coming out. But I got the fan out of it. I gutted it. So I'm going to slide this baby out. We'll attach that rack, the filter rack to the base of the other furnace we'll cut the bottom and we'll we'll get it in here we'll have to pan in uh, we'll have to pan it in on a supply because this this furnace is taller we have to we have to redo that electrical and we'll clean it up but she's coming out she's coming out mama steve is working again mama next level oh yeah all right, guys, so I got the furnace here when it's back. I got to cut the side out. Then I got to climb down inside there, you know, to tie in, tie in, to, to roll the duct work in. So I disconnected all the wires. I got the wires just tie wrapped out of the way for now. And I'll pull this fan out. This fan's going to come right out. Then I'll lay this on the side and I'll cut this the same as the other furnace. And I'll put the return, return grill on the side so I can slide my, my filter in later. And uh, I'll worry about tying the top in after when I get the furnace in. This furnace definitely, this def definitely shorter than the other one. But you can see it's a, it's a tough spot, you know. So uh, it's not an easy spot to work in. So let me pull this out. We'll get this furnace on the side, and we'll cut the cut the hole on the side. All right, so I got this thing cut where I'm going to be cutting it out. I'll probably start with my grind and make a cut. And I'll get my little nibbler in there and we'll see if we could cut it away. You gotta open it enough to be able to get the nibbler in there. This thing will slice ya. Gonna get the nibbler in there, mama. Oh yeah.
that's it. Called the Nibbler. That's a little less though. These are real good. A little handheld, a little switch on the bottom. These are nice. A little 110, you know. Alright guys, so I got the bottom all taped up with the tape. This is um, this really good silver tape. It's got the paper on the back. It's good stuff. Also got the return in. Uh, put a couple of screws here. And I, if I got screws, I like to put tape over the screws so you can slide the filter in. And this, this edge here, I... See, it's right in there. So what I'll do is um, I'll put the unit in. Then i got to bend these tabs over, crawl inside. Uh, once the furnace is in, I'll crawl inside and bend the tabs over to, to connect this to the duck. You can see the tabs are going to be bent over after. This basically the, the duck comes right here like this. This is going to be the back. And then the... Then that gets folded over. That's how it, and, then, and the filter goes right in. All right, so let me get this. Let me get this in place, and we'll get you some shots. It only comes up like 34 inches, so I got to pan in about 12 inches or so. That'll be no problem for me. Man of my calibration, no problem. All right, I got the filter, the filter rack in there, so. I'll wait before I put the uh, blower back in there in case I drop any screws down. I got my S lock all the way around the base here. And I got the S lock all, all the way around the plenum here. So I, gotta, I gotta do my, my pieces next, but. Uh, put a little, little scare piece in there and scoot it in there, so. I just have to put a little a little piece on the top there and then I can put that, that starting collar back on there when I'm done and pick up that second floor. Now, this is only a tiny little house, so it doesn't really need a lot. Um, the other one that was in there was a 75 and it was this is a little 50. This thing will blow this house away. It's only it's only a tiny house, so we're gonna be good with it. I needed to go with the 14 inch wide either that or rip this wall down, but this has been like this for years, so we're going to leave it. Now let me see if I can get some sheet metal and I'll show you guys how I, I pan that in. I've done videos about this before, but gas pipe's going to work out good. I'm going to turn that right down and, and go right down in there, I'm thinking. Electrical is not going to be that big of a deal either. Coming along, let me get some sheet metal and see what we can do here. Alright guys, so that back piece, if I go from lip to lip, I am, say 10 and 5 eighths, yeah, 10 and 5 eighths and we add an inch and an inch. So if we go uh, 10 and 5 eighths, 11 and 5 eighths, 12 and 5 eighths is my piece I need. All right? Because it goes up one inch here, and it goes down one inch there. So, 12 and 5 eighths. And then what I'll do is I'll get it, just make it a little bit longer than what I need. And I'll show you why. So if I go like... 17 is good. 17 by 12 and 5 eighths. Alright guys, so I got my piece slid in there. It's in the grooves, it's in the S-lock. What I'll do is, I'll mark here. This is going to be one bend. I'll mark here, and this is going to be the other bend. Okay. Mark here, this is going to be another bend. And we'll mark here. And this... I'm lining it right up where, where this is, and this is in. Okay? So I'll show you what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'll put my S-lock on this, I'll mark it, and then I'll mark over one inch. The one inch mark over will be my cut. Same thing on this side. 
Can you see? Am I blinding you guys with this fucking light? I got my mark here. Can you guys see that? I got my mark here, mark here. So you're going to mark on the inside because i got to cross break it on the inside. So let me pull that thing out and I'll show you what I'm going to do. i got a mark there. A mark there. A mark there. And a mark there. And I write in so I know, you know, where my top or my bottom is and where the inside is. So I'll show you what I'm going to do from there. So can you see that? I'm hoping you can. So there's my marks here. That I marked. Right? I'll put a mark there like that. That's my angle. Then I'll go over one inch. That's gonna be my cut. Okay? So this will be the bend. And then that one inch will be the, the bend over for the next piece. Same thing on this side. That's where my marks are, right there. That's my angle, right? I'm going to go over one inch. See, that's that's my, my bend, and then the one inch over will be my cut, and I'll, I'll bend it over one inch. Same thing with this. Now, on something like this that's hard to get in, I can cross-break this and make my bends in place with a piece of S-lock. It's not that big of a deal. I could do that if I had to, because it's kind of tough getting back there. Or anything like this, you should cross break it. You know, I'll show you how. I got my Hensley bender here. I'll slide the piece in. Slide the piece in and just give it a little chooch. And just a little, little bend. Well, you have to be careful with this sheet metal because it can slice you like a pig. So you have to be careful pulling it through this thing because it's kind of kind of binds. Get it where you want it. And give it another chooch. And there's our cross break right there. Okay. I'll cut the side, I'll cut these corners out, and then we'll get it in place. There's another lip. All right now, you gotta cross break it from the inside if you want your, your bends to go out. If you cross break it from the outside, your bends will go in. It's kind of looks shitty, so that's what you want right there. That should be my piece. It fit in there perfect, Mama. <laughs> Steve's a real working man. Next level, mama. Oh, yeah, he is. 
There you go, buddy. That's how it's done. All right, next what I'll do is I'll get a couple of S locks on each on each corner, and then now that'll, that'll be my other piece. We'll, we'll go into that and come out. So my next piece I slide in there. I'll have to cut this angle. I'll slide it in there. And I'll cut this angle so it fits in the S lock perfect. And then you know I'll show you when I get there. But that's you know that's that's not coming down perfectly square. It's off an inch or so probably. Sheet metal is not hard to do if you do it this way. It's got two edges. Let's see if I can open it up for you so you can see. See, one side's like that, and the other side's like this. That's what it looks like. So what I'll do is the piece that I'm going to be sliding my, my sheet metal into, I'll open it up with a screwdriver. The other piece I'll keep kind of tight. So I'll bang it, I'll bang it on the plenum. To hold it, they'll hold it in place. I always put this this part that's gonna go receiving the new sheet metal on the outside. This part that's gonna be receiving the sheet metal always goes on the outside. Okay. I'll go in like this. All right. And the new sheet metal will go in on the outside. See that lip? It's open with a screwdriver. So the new piece will go into the S-lock. Same thing on this side. I want to put... I want to put the S-lock. So when I put my new piece, it goes in on the outside. Alright, so I got those two pieces. I'll, I'll measure this, I'll cut my piece, and I'll slide it in. Again, you want to take... You want to take two measurements, so my measurement here in the back is ten and a half. Oh, ten and a half in the back. It's twelve and a half. And thirteen. Twelve and a half and thirteen. further so something like 24 inches would be be more than enough and I can yeah 24 is good all right guys so I slid it in it went into that S lock all the way in the back and I marked the top and I marked the bottom that's gonna be my cut and I'll come over one more one one no that'll be my bend and I'll come over one inch I'll, that'll be my cut and my bend over. And before I slide it in, I'll cross break it, just like the back one. Alright guys, I got all three sides. I got it all screwed in. I got a pookie it good before I close up the front. I got some pookie. I got some more in the chalk tuba. Um, it's duck seal. I'm going to have to seal up all the inside really good before I close it up. I'll probably seal all them up too, them joints if I can. But I'm all concerned about getting these these joints here sealed. We're working with building it as we go, Mama. Oh yeah. All right, I got all the duct work back together. Let's go into the second floor. That one there. Everything's pookied up. I got this return tied back in. I gotta put the fan in now. Do the smoke pipe, gas pipe, and the electrical. I should fire it up. So it's coming along. Now I could have went with a 90%, but me go to 90%, I would have to go to 17 and a half inch wide, and it would have been. It, it it was really really close, so I ain't got no problem going with the 80% uh, into the chimney. I really don't. I want it to stay with the 14 inch wide unit. Uh, it just makes life a lot easier here. Uh, I probably could have gained a little bit, but you know, then trying to get the exhaust outside would have been a would have, would have been a problem. There's no problem with makeup here down here. This is an old house. Um, it's an old old stone foundation, and it's very drafty, so I ain't got no issues. These doors, these doors never never get closed anyway. They're always open. I'll probably leave it right off. All 
Alright, well, I got the electrical done. Came in with um, BX. And I put the switch up top there. On off switch. I just ran a positive, um, a neutral, a power, and a ground right inside that. Clipped it there. Clipped it there. And just ran right into the box there. So the, the switch is up top there now. Which is not a big deal. It's right there. It's not a big deal. Um, I got the gas pipe done. I had people ask me about the gas pipe, how I do my gas pipe. I like to pipe all my stuff off hot. I don't use like it using any flex on a furnace. So uh, I had to put a couple in there. Close nipple. An elbow. I came down with a, a small, like a two and a half inch nipple to a T, to a drip, drip leg. And I came into the union right here. And yes, I did use pipe dope on my unions. I put pipe dope on my unions. I feel it that it goes together better and it don't bind. So that's what I do. I use pipe dope. And I've been doing that ever since I've been an apprentice and I'm gonna continue. And I put the sticker here with the date, 80%. I got it all pookied up good. I got that all done. Uh, the smoke pipe I came up. A three by four increaser. And I jumped right into the chimney like it was before. I put a hanger here off this beam to carry it. And also put a hanger here off the um the plenum. It makes for a nice sturdy nice sturdy job, you know. Next thing I gotta do is um start it up, check the gas pressure. And do my combustion. Check my combustion. But well, she's ready to rock and roll. I'm just picking up all my stuff now. and uh, We'll do a combustion test on it. It might smoke a little bit when I first turn it on. We'll have to see. Smoke alarms might go off. We'll have to see. I'll run it a little bit, see if it sets the smoke alarms off, and then I'll do the combustion test. Houston, we have ignition. Make sure the smoke alarms don't go off in the house. A little 50,000. It's a little small house, all I need. She's blowing off a little bit of smoke. Quiet with the cover on there. It's getting a little smoky in here, but that's normal. Oh, there they go, mama! There's a little test you guys can do. Put your little seal detector right on the, the register. If it goes off at all, or any kind of CO, you know, it's probably going to crack heat exchanger. The other system was running, it was probably running three or four on the registers. This one's running fine, not zero. Yeah. <clears throat> a little personal. That's just a quick little test I like to do sometimes. Alright guys, I'm going to do a start up here. I'm going to check the gas pressure. I got it in the port there. On the manifold size port, and I went through this hole here. I want to put the door back on, so that's the best way to check it. And we'll do a combustion test, and we'll check the gas pressure at the same time. Zero out right now. We got my gas pressure here, and my combustion will go in here, and my draft will go in here, so I can check it at the same time. So let me get it started, and we'll. Uh, We'll get the combustion test done. 
Set that down to three five, see it? Three eight. Then back this back this off to get it to three five if I can get it in there. Alright, it's in there now. it off or we'll drop it. Right around 3.5 we'll, we'll check it right there. 3.5. Alright, so that's that's pretty much set where we want it there. Put the cap back on. Probably wouldn't make that much of a difference on the combustion but should be set around 3.5 so we'll check it. Check the combustion now. You can see I put the door back on. That draft looks good there. It should be, you know, around six percent. I'm a little high there with the oxygen, so I really should give it more gas. My draft is good. Let's see what the um, CO2, eight point five to eleven. So really, I probably need to fire it up a little bit, bring that oxygen down. I'm going to try firing it up and see what happens. I'm going to try to fire it up and see what happens. <laughs> oh, use the gas pressure. I want to bring that oxygen down. You see my PPM's at 24 there? See where I'm at now. I'm going to fire it up. I'm going to give it some more gas, Mama. I'm gonna give it the old gun there, mama. Trying to get my oxygen down, you know, around six, without my CO going through the roof there. Twenty-seven parts per million. Let me get a little bit more gas. See what happens. Six with the oxygen now. Carbon dioxide, eight point five to eleven. I'm in range there. Um, 
oxygen, it should be 3.8 to 6, not 5.8. Uh, parts per million is 28. My stack temperature should be 225 to 500. I'm good at the stack temperature. Look at my gas pressure is running at. Four and a quarter. I can't always go by three and a half because it's under fire. Alright, I'm going to leave it there. I'm right around six with my oxygen. Um, my carbon dioxide should be 5.8 to 11. I'm good there. Uh, PPMs is good. So my gas pressure is running right there. 4.2. My stack temperature is good. Everything's good. So I had to kind of fire it up. So you can't always go by oxygen. Uh, you can't always go by gas pressure, guys. I proved it right there. Stack temperature 275 to 500. I'm good with the stack temp. Oxygen 3.8 to 6. I'm right around 6. PPM's under 100, undiluted. I'm at 35. Stack temperature, I'm good with that. On the 500, all good. Giraffe should be 0.02 to 0.04. We'll check that in a second. And uh, the carbon dioxide, 8.5 to 11. I'm um, 868. All right, so let's see what our draft is. Two, uh, 0.02 to 0.04. It's a windy day outside, so that's probably why my draft's bouncing around a little bit. But I'm between... Yeah, you can see how windy it is. See how it's bouncing around? And it goes way up. It's a windy day. My draft's kind of bouncing around because of the wind. It's windy out today. But I'm good with the draft. I'm fine with it. A draft there. See it? See the little ball? I'll go outside. I'll show you how windy it is out. But all right, so I'm good with that. Actually, my PPMs are coming down a little bit. So I got little cheat sheets for different type of furnaces and stuff. So different kinds here for all different furnaces, all the different ones I work on, so I know what I should be running at. Testo team, Testo mama. Oh, yeah. 4-3, I'm running. And look at all my oxygen's right where I want to be, actually, so that's good. So I had to fire it up. I had to fire it up, mama. Oh, yeah, I had to fire it up. Next level. I got that plug back in there for the gas manifold. Just goes to show you, you can't always run it. Um, at the set pressure. Can't run it at the set gas pressure or it's not going to be, it's under fired. You know, and when I took that course from, uh, with Jim Davis, he said the same thing. He doesn't always go by, he goes by his combustion analysis meter more so than what the gas pressure is. So, my other furnace that was in here, I had to turn that sucker way down. Uh, so... Go figure. All right, you want to make sure that plug's in there nice and tight. That little adjusting a gas valve. You're better off getting a little stubby, a stubby screwdriver like this. Because a lot of times you can't get a regular screwdriver in there. I found that works the best, one of these little stubbies. It's, uh, it's just a regular screwdriver. nice little units it's kind of you know it's only 14 inches wide it's a tiny unit but it's all I need for this house <clears throat> did the combustion test put the date new gas furnace combustion test it's done I just have to uh, take my draft gauge I gotta get a couple of plugs for these two and I'll be done 
This is what I've been using for a draft gauge. Is, oh, it's pretty good. So Draft's kind of jumping around because it's a windy day outside, but I'm good with that. Everything's good. This is in my own house, so I'm very familiar with the system. I've been here for 34 years, so I put the original furnace in with my father. And I uh, just did the change out now. 34 years old. Yep. Put it in when I was 17. Yes, ma'am. She already did a rock and roll. I gotta get a couple of plugs for that. No big deal. I put the plugs in there for the YouTube police. Oh, yeah, mama. The YouTube police are after me. Oh, yeah. They're gonna get me, mama. Oh, yeah, mama. They're after me. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. She's done, mama. She's next level. Oh, yeah. The only thing I want to do is a temperature split. I got a thermometer there, and I got a thermometer here. So we'll see what the split is. Here's another book that I got from uh, Jim Davis. Six to nine, he calls for the oxygen on Jim Davis's stuff. The other stuff was from True Tech Tools. This is, uh, calls for six to nine. And, uh, supply air temperature 132 to 134. We'll see what our split is, but uh, I want to check it. Alright, so we're coming in about 68. That's gonna go up obviously because I got it I got it cranked up. I got it running so 68. We'll let it run for a bit and we'll see how what it comes up to. Now, I did fire it up to get my oxygen down so I'll make sure that it's not, you know, going out too hot. Uh, so we'll say 132 would be safe, right? I'm 70 here. Here's my split right there, 62. 132. Uh, that's what his supply here. Temperature should be 132 to 134, so I'm fine there. You know, I'm not overfired. Uh, my gas pressure is running a little bit higher because I wanted to get my oxygen down. I think we're good right there. Sixty degree split. Alright, I covered the holes with some tape. So if I ever have to get in there again, I could just get in there. That's it. I'm happy with the um, the temperature coming out of it. It's not crazy high. You know, my concern was I fired up the gas valve, you know, to bring the oxygen down. I was concerned about being overfired, so I wanted to check the split and uh, the temperature coming out. And I'm right there in the book where, where Jim Davis says I should be, so I'm good with it. See how it's a windy day outside. You can hear it, so that's why that draft is bouncing around. See the trees moving? That's why the draft's bouncing. 